Well, I would differ on, on one point. I think that the president knows exactly what he is doing. I think these are deliberate policies uh, uh, it could be because they, they are strongly supported uh, by uh, uh, the Democrats in the Congress. Uh, and you know, when, when people ask me, well, you know, how could this be happening to our country? Uh, you know, I, I have to tell them, if, this, if, if you voted for Biden and the Democrats, this is exactly what you voted for. And if that surprises you, you weren't paying much attention. So uh, I, I think that we as Americans are going to have to have a great discussion among ourselves about the direction of our country and the future of our country. We started having that uh, in the last election cycle. Uh, I think we have a lot more talking to do among ourselves uh, if we're going to change this government. A question via Twitter from one of our viewers. If the congressman is so into people obeying laws, what's he doing to meaningfully prosecute corporations and other employers who hire undocumented immigrants? Uh, we need to do a lot more. That's, that's a very, very important question. Uh, we have one of, one of the bills in the package that we uh, uh, promised the people through the commitment uh, to America uh, is an E-Verify requirement uh, that anyone seeking employment uh, has to uh, go through the E-Verify system, which is not complicated. You simply submit your name and Social Security number, of, uh, and uh, the federal government will come back and verify that you're either uh, a citizen or legal resident, or you're not. Um, uh, I mean, when you give a, a store clerk a credit card, that uh, that store clerk knows everything about it. He needs to know about your, your credit. Uh, why can't we do the same thing for employment? That's a bill that uh, Congressman Ken Calvert has introduced repeatedly in, in uh, uh, past sessions of the Congress. Uh, he's introduced it again, and it is one of the uh, key reforms that uh, we expect to pass out of the House this year and hope, perhaps in the next session, to see signed into law by a new president. Crystal Lake, Illinois, this is John, line for Democrats. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Um, so I just had, a, I guess, a few questions and comments. Um, uh, you said it was a crime to cross the board. I was just wondering if that was a misdemeanor or a felony. It's a, it's a misdemeanor. Um, also, yeah, right. So, and, and, um, and by the way, by the way, one of, one of the other bills in our package uh, is to make visa overstays the same misdemeanor. Uh, that's a crime. And, and, it's, punish, and it's punishable by uh, 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 six, I believe, uh, six months in prison. Con Congressman, if I may. The international law says that asylum seekers are allowed to make their claim anywhere along our border. But if you're saying that the cartels that are so scary, you know, you don't want to let the immigrants stay in Mexico, even if they came up some, say, Venezuela. You're OK with them staying with those scary cartels that you are so scared of? No, the, the law that you cite, you've only cited half of that law. The other half of that law says if you cross the border and claim asylum, you must be detained until your asylum claim is heard, not released into the country. In fact, 800,000 of the 1.7 million uh, illegal immigrants that this administration has deliberately admitted into the country, nearly half of them, have been admitted to the country without even a legal notice to appear in court. Kino, Lakeland, Florida, Independent. Good morning. You're next. Yes, praise be to C-SPAN for letting us citizens ask our Congress people questions. Uh, Congressman, I heard a recent discussion that said that the deficit is because of the Republicans have shown favoritism to the super rich. Reagan cut taxes, son George uh, Bush cut taxes, uh, uh, Trump cut taxes. So this $31 trillion result of uh, uh, Republicans showing favoritism to rich people so they can have a second yacht instead of providing health care for poor and working class people. So what's your reaction to that idea that the deficit is because of favoritism to the rich cut in taxes? And, and what are Republicans going to do to help working and poor people in this coming Congress? What are, you, what are your plans to help struggling people instead of showing more favoritism to the super rich? Well, uh First of all, uh, I, uh, you have to look at the record. The uh, Trump tax cuts, the Reagan tax cuts, actually produced more revenue after we cut taxes than they had before. That was the positive impact they had on the economy. But cutting taxes without cutting spending uh, is a fool's errand. Once you have spent a dollar, you've already decided to tax it. The only question is what form that tax takes. It's either a, a, a tax right now, which uh, uh, reduces your current standard of living. It's uh, borrowing, which reduces your future standard of, uh, of, of living. 
uh, or you print the money and you pay it back every day through higher prices at the gas station and the grocery store and everywhere else you spend a dollar. So it's not tax cutting that's important. It is cutting the spending. To borrow that, that old uh, Clintonian line, um, uh, it's the spending, stupid. Um, uh, and as far as helping working Americans, uh, the policies of the Trump administration did that. We saw the strongest, uh, uh, fastest wage growth of, uh, in this country in 40 years under the Trump policies, 40 years. And most of that was working class Americans. It was very much a, uh, a working class uh, uh, economic boom. Um, we, we, we stopped illegal immigration. That brought down competition for, for, for working class jobs. Uh, and at the same time, we reduced taxes and saw this incredible expansion of the economy. And, and a lot of those were corporate taxes. Uh, people think, well, I don't pay corporate taxes. And the answer is, of course you do. Uh, there's only three ways a corporate tax can be paid. It's either paid by you as a consumer through higher prices, uh, it's paid by you as an employee through lower wages, or it's paid by you as an investor for lower, with lower earnings. That's your 401k. So those policies worked, and um, uh, we need to restore them. It's not the party. It's not the, it's not the individual politician. It's the policies that are produced by these politicians and these parties and the policies of the last administration, whatever you think of Donald Trump personally, they worked and worked extremely well. For the first time in a generation, the wage gap between rich and poor was actually narrowing under these policies. That's what we can do for working people. On cutting the spending, I want to ask you about this headline from Roll Call. Lawmakers to the Pentagon curtail defense spending wish lists. The picture that goes with that story is Elizabeth Warren, one of the signatories of that letter. You're also a signatory of that letter. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, I, I agree with Ronald Reagan that, that uh, defense is not a budget issue. You spend what you need to spend uh, in order to defend the country. But that doesn't excuse waste within the defense budget. And this, this uh, basically the wish list are, are, are once they've gotten their, their budget put together, then they have this wish list of other things they'd like. And Do those usually get funded? And it's uh, quite often. And, it, and it's usually very high priority items. They've learned, just a budgeting trick, uh, you put your, your, your mid-level priorities in the budget and then put the really important ones outside the budget. And, and it all get, gets And funded. then you get all of them. And uh, that's just one of the many tricks that the, the Pentagon has used over the years. I mean, I can go through a long list of things where they're actually, I think, undermining national security by wasting our defense dollars. Time for maybe one more call. Ron's been waiting for you out of San Clemente, uh, Republican. Ron, uh, go ahead. You'll be the last call with Congressman McClintock. Hey, uh, Congressman Tom, our mentor and, and uh, great uh, uh, Minty, uh, for the years ahead and behind, uh, we uh, call in honor, of course, of Gil Ferguson, oh. uh, the great uh, uh, assemblyman. I, we call in honor of uh, Bill Dannemeyer and, and Tom and, of course, Bob Dornan. But uh, we have to remind you of something, sir. Uh, remember the Hungarian uh, Revolution in '56 when uh, uh, Eisenhower brought in Hungarians because of the of what, what the Russians had done. We have about 15 million Ukrainians that also should be coming to this country, too. So what are you going to do about them? Well, Come I, on, now. Get Congressman, go ahead. Give you the final minute or so. Well, I'd, I'd like to, to assure that they're able to defend their own country, which is what I think they would prefer to do. I've talked to a number of Ukrainian immigrants. They want to go back. Uh, uh, so um, uh, you know, they're, they're coming here because they've been attacked by a foreign nation. I would rather see that uh, the Ukraine defend itself, repel that invasion, and send a message to every rogue leader around the world that that's a pretty bad idea these days to attack a neighbor. I, I think if the Ukrainians uh, are able to prevail or at least inflict unacceptable damages on the Russians, uh, that uh, 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 Kim Jong-un and uh, Xi Jinping uh, and uh, Khomeini and Iran are all going to have second thoughts about their uh, extraterritorial designs. Congressman Tom McClintock, a Republican from California, Budget Committee member, also the chairman of this Congress of the Judiciary Subcommittee on Immigration Integrity, Security and Enforcement. Always appreciate the time. Uh, John, me too. Thank you for having me.